Hey, welcome back to the shop. This is one of those little how-to videos that I explained I would be doing in lieu of doing large projects because of lumber. Let, no more needs to be said about that. So when we built the house, the builders did not case the windows in the inside, and they cased the doors in the standard builder grade casing with 45s in the same casing across the top. So we didn't like that. So what we did is we built headers for the doors and valences for the windows with some profile, some, a little bit of elegance to them. And we put them all around the house. So what I'm gonna show you in this video is the simple process to do that, to make these little uh, um, door headers, valences, whatever. Um, let's go out into the house and uh, I'll show you the, what we did and what it looks like. So this is in the kitchen. This is one of the door headers. It goes over the sliding glass for the, uh, for the, back, of the back of the house to the deck. Um, it overhangs the casing by about a quarter of an inch, kind of giving that little sheltered reveal there on either side. And of course, the casing itself is stepped off a little bit to give a, a, a little bit of a, um, a reveal here on this edge right here. But that's a, that's, this is what one of the door headers looks like. So here's a window valence. You see it's stepped off the wall so that we have, uh, it covers the top of the, of the blinds. Again, kind of the builder grade uh, casing on either side, but uh, uh, the, the same kind of profile as the, over, the, over the kitchen door. And here's another valence uh, that's in the front room. All the trim in this room is green, and the window is kind of a, ba the walls are kind of a lightish beige color. Again, we got the valence stepped off the wall to hide uh, the top of the blinds with the builder grade um, basically uh, 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 casing there. And we also put in crown molding everywhere in the house. And this was a difficult here because I got, these are supposed to be two 22 and a half degrees and they're not 22 and a half degrees, they're whatever the builder built. Just to let you know that actually something is going on in the shop. Uh, Mara bought the wood for these a while ago. She's building two more of these um, these uh, table looms, uh, for tape looms, buried by some wood stock, some stock from our regular stock here. Building two more of these looms for some customers, and uh, so they're in process right now. So uh, let's get on with uh, showing the making of a, a, a door header. For stability and ease of work, the, the body of those parts are all made of three-quarter inch MDF. Um, nice and stable easy to work, inexpensive, and then we build it up from there to make the header or the, the valence. Now, the headers over the doors are three and a half inches. The valences are five and a half inches. Now, if you're gonna make these for your house, kind of set the depth, the height of them relative to the size of the room. It's kind of, a, kind of an eyeball kind of thing. Uh, if it's a small room, you don't really need big fixtures uh, over the doors or whatever. If it's a very large room, you need something that's, that's robust and proud and stands out. So let's, let's rip this down and, and move on from there. So I'm, I'm just doing a small sample piece. Normally, of course, you make a long one and then you cut the parts out of it. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a moment. Uh, so the next step is to put, a, put the profile on here. You notice there was a bead detail along the bottom. That's simple. Router table, quarter inch round, a beading bit. Uh, let's put that on there now. I've set up a uh, quarter inch beading bit in my uh, in router table. And the fence is running along where the bearing is. So now we put that beading detail on. So, bead detail, step one. Now, you can use any profile you want, whatever floats your boat. However you want to do this, do a chamfer, do a roundover, do a V-bit, something, anything you want 
as part of, of, of your design. It's entirely up to you. There's nothing fixed here. It's just the way you want to do it. So let's get, let me get, grab a piece of uh, the molding, come down here and glue it in place. So what I have here is just a simple piece of, um, of cove molding. You know, this is not MDF, obviously. This is lumber. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it and tack it down with some uh, pins, with a pinner, in place on this molding. And there's the basis for our molding. And then after that, we'll, sh we'll work on doing the returns. So I get, get the glue in, pl on play in place using my pinner, 23 gauge pinner. So I'm just going to tack it in place. Yeah, helps to turn the air on, doesn't it? There we go. Got to have, got to have air to do this, air pressure to do this. I'm lining it up with the top and this edge. And moving down. Now, one of the reasons for using a pinner is if you have to cut through one of these pins when you're doing the returns, the saw doesn't see it. It's so, such a small wire that the saw doesn't see it, and it, it, won't, it won't hurt the saw. So now we wait for that to dry, and we'll, I'll show you how we do the returns. So first thing we're going to do is cut a 45. <clears throat> kind of obvious. <clears throat> cut a 45 to start a return back to the wall. Uh, when I first started making these years ago, I would cut a 45 and then I'd take another piece and cut a tiny little 45, or try to, to glue directly up here for the return. Found a simpler process, requires an extra step, but it's a simpler process nonetheless. So, leave us do the first 45. Ears up. Okay, there's the 45. I'm going to make it from this corner right here. Right at the top of the, uh, of the molding. Okay, so there's the 45 that I want to return this way. So let's take a piece off to use as an example of, what the, of the next step. So now what I want to do is I want to cut it a 45 on this piece so it matches this 45 on this piece. So basically I want to go that way. So now you see what I've got here. I got a big return. But I want a big return. Normally I would have this cut off right about here. But I want a big return and I'll show you why. I went back and cut it shorter. So now I have my molding piece that was going to go up against the wall. And now I have the return that I can glue and pin right here. So now I've got a rather you know, large return here. Well, the trick here is it gives you the opportunity to handle the piece and cut it off easily. Once the glue has dried, you basically come back with a saw and you cut it off flush here. So now it can be mounted flush to the wall. Now, if this was going to be for a, a window valence, you'd have that stand off anyway to, to have it stand off from the wall. So let's glue it together. And uh, I'll use the pins again. Let's glue it together. Now, I'm not going to do a fancy glue job and it's MDF. Normally I treat this with some some uh, uh, some shellac or something like that. I'm just going to do a, a double glue glue wipe and we'll glue this together. So this time I have the air on and that's ready to go. Again I'm using uh, I'm using the uh, pinner because of uh, the you can cut through it without a problem. The, the wires. So now I've got a little bit of a pre-glue 
on here because as we all know, MDF is a very porous wood or product. It's not, it's wood, wood byproduct basically, but it's very porous. So I'm just going to do a quick glue up here. Squishy squish it out. Not being too careful here because this is just an example. So there you go. There's the return. Now, the way this works is once this is dried, and we'll come back and do it, once this is dried, you take a saw and you cut it off here so it's flush with the wall. And this is an easier way to do returns on uh, valences and door headers and, and framing. So you got this, this is going to be waste, yes, but, but it makes it a lot easier than trying to cut a single piece out here to make that return. Um, now, as to finishing, so it's MDF. The, uh, it's very porous and absorbs the paint very quickly, uh, and especially where you've actually cut the surface like I have here with the beading bit. What I like to do is either shoot a couple of coats of shellac over it, or use uh, Kills Primer. Binzer's Shellac Primer or Kills Primer. Either one is fine. The nice thing about Kills Primer, primer it's a high build primer. So you can lay it on there and sand it smooth um, and give you, it gives you a nice detail, nice crisp detail. Of course when you use shellac and you spray it down with shellac until the shellac is all soaked in and cured uh, and then give it a light sanding, that seals it for painting um, uh, that sign video I did earlier shows that. So that's basically how I did all of the headers and all of the um, all the valences in the house. And it's a very simple process. Uh, like I said, let your, let your imagination run crazy. Do it any way you want. Use any profiles you want. Use any molding you want. There's no rules here. You can do it any way you want. So that's it. Uh, that's how I did it all. Um, we don't have to worry about showing how to cut that off because we all know how to use a saw. Uh, so until next time, make great things out of wood and let's see what other little project I can come up with to put on camera.